Oh my god. I have a very special guest today that I'm gonna break up in just a second. Just Curly Things YouTube channel brought brought um brought up a known out loud proud white supremacist. During her one-on-one interview with this man, she stated that slavery was an exaggeration. That was not the only thing she did. She called black men that work for her. She called them my Africans. Oh, my God. My goodness. My goodness. And she and this dude sat there and giggled it up and laughed it up. Needless to say, those exchanges she had with this white supremacist set off a firestorm for her and her channel. Black people in this space went absolutely berserk and off the rails. Now, remember O'Shea Duke Jackson talked about, well, no, he I didn't get to this point in the clip, but he talked about that there are seven, several founding members of the of the black of this thing called the black manosphere. Well, the black manosphere kind of exploded into two camps. The defending of Hannah, she's not a racist crowd, and and the Hannah needs to be held accountable crowd. It has gotten so bad that these two groups of men have decided to make three and four hour long uh, long live streams, calling each other out, asking each other to pull up on each other's stream. You got one streamer, and I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. Yes, I'm going to drop names. You got one streamer, Jason Black, the business channel, shout out to him, setting, uh, setting a call out and smoke stream two days ahead of time for a particular streamer to pull up on his live and defend uh, the race, the, defend why Hannah's not a racist. And then that particular streamer, instead of answering Jason's challenge, decided to go and set up his own live stream during that exact same time and then started saying, if anybody want to pull up over here and talk to me, y'all come over here. It, 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 it's just mind boggling. All of these men have large platforms, large followers, and have a large impact. And these black men have, beca have become the face of defending Hannah and the face of the modern black man cat fight over just pearly things. The black men in the middle of this madness, Obsidian, O'Shea, Jason Black, Anton Daniels, MTR, Philip Scott, Dennis Sperling, the lead attorney here. All of these men have very large platforms. We're talking with the combined reach over a million people between these men. Now, let me be perfectly clear because I know some people might run back to some guys or whatever. Let me be perfectly clear. Each of these men are involved with this issue to a varying degree. Some have very direct involvement, like Jason Black, who exposed it. Osei Duke Jackson, who led the I'm out on, on, on just pearly things. Um, and also MTR, who led the I'm out not doing no business with you again. And some who have not so direct opinions about, have, that are not so direct or not so close, but also had, had, had an opinion. Most of these men have decided to make this a referendum on if Jess Pearlie thinks is a racist or not. This has nothing to do with her being racist. This is all about the reaction of black men in this space and the men who support those larger platforms and their support of Hannah. I hope that wasn't confusing. <laughs> Today, these, today's conversation is not about if Hannah is a racist or not. The conversation is mostly about the reaction of the black men, the infighting of the black men, and how this looks to our women. Here's, the, here's my bottom line opinion. This was an epic failure for black men in this space on black YouTube. Shout out to my unsolicited opinions podcast. Those ladies. Those ladies did a live last week and I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if it was sadness or disappointment that those ladies had watching these men with these larger platforms fight over this woman and, and how tens of thousands of black men came to the defense of something that was indefensible. And then they try to put a spin on it. They, 
they tried to put a spin on it. It was an attempt to be, it was an attempt to try to minimize this down. They wanted to provide the ultimate excuse. They, the, the black manosphere provided the ultimate excuse for our women to have something to hang their hats on or not come into cooperation with the regular old brother that wants a long-term permanent connection with the black woman. The sentiment over there on, on, on my Unsolicited Opinions podcast was that this was an example of who black men really want to protect. And I'm telling you, I sat there and watched that stream and tried to find a reason to disagree with these ladies, and I could not. All right. Whew. Okay. My special guest. I have a special guest that I want to talk to about this. She's an excellent content creator. I call her, I, well, she don't know this, but I affectionately call her the queen of tea, the madam of eviction, <laughs> madam of evictions. I hope she don't get offended by that. I'm talking about the YouTube content creator, Messy Michonne. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Michonne, you live. You've been live for a long time. How you doing? Shout out to the chat. Can you hear me? I can hear you real good. Everybody can hear you. Hey, what's going on? Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. I do have a question for you. Yes. So from a woman's perspective, a black woman's perspective, did do you think Jess Pearly things expose the weakness in our so-called productive character driven black men? Lord have mercy. You ain't holding back. Who? Um, Oh, Lord have mercy. If you're speaking specifically about the, I'm going to just say Black YouTube. I'm going to just yeah. say Black YouTube, not necessarily the manosphere. Um, what, what's been exposed, because I can't really say if it's her or if it's Jason Black, um, is that the Black community as a whole, doesn't matter if they're male or female, does not understand problem resolution. So that's what I'm seeing because friendships are breaking up, quote unquote friendships. Everyone has their opinion, whether whatever, I don't even think it's about her anymore, to be perfectly honest with you. you what, what can the one really make that woman do if she is or is not racist? Nothing. So you either rock with her or you don't. So it looks like there's a split where people are rocking with her and then there's others that don't. Why do we have to throw stones is the first question. That, that's the question. That, that's the first question. Uh -huh. So why do you have to throw stones? And then you answer back and then it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Where's the conversation? All these talks thus far that I've heard is conversation. We got to talk. We got to figure it out. You don't understand the man. You don't understand the woman. Now everybody's just out here not listening and doubling down and tripling down. And it just seems I'm like... I don't even know if this is ever going to end. That's how I look at it. I, I, I don't I don't know. Well, it's going to end because, you know, time has a way of washing away a lot of things. But the, the issue that I had was one, how the, the spinning of the narrative mm -hmm. to make this about it being racist. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they just no one's I don't think that really came out directly that she was that that was the original intent of it to say that she was a racist. I think that was the spin that came out of it. But, and then the, the other side of it was the, and shout out to MTR, but when he did, he came out right away and he came out um, firm and strong. And I watched MTR live. I was watching him live when he was learning about it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And to see his whole, um, his whole understanding of Pearl break in real time. <laughs> you know, that was pretty hard to watch. 